Men, uh, I was asked to speak on uh, mental illness. So mental illness uh, for me is, um, it can speak at, it at two levels, one level at karmic or the other levels as belief systems. It doesn't really matter. They're both kind of the same thing. Uh, and um, so one way to look at it, contextualize it, is that um, I sort of see it as um, the uh, the individual, the 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 identified body thought personality, um, is subject to the idea of separation, and therefore tends to accumulate things such as guilt, shame, anger, um, uh, grievances, all kinds of things. Uh, and this then, to the extent this, and then there might be a tendency for addictions and numbing out behaviors, which could be Netflix, could be eating too many donuts, uh, could be romantic or sexual obsession, or could be gambling, can be many kinds of things which create temporary relief from the feeling of separation, you could say the separation from the truth. Um, so these things, uh, and then you could see the world as being one's individual beliefs and the collective belief systems that are floating around in the collective ego, which one, one, can, one can believe, have one's own beliefs, which one believes, which limits the, the self uh, because of the limiting belief, and also pick up limiting beliefs from the collective. Um, so, so I'll speak at that level, and then I'll speak at the karmic level a bit later. So, basically, if one is thinking, especially if one thinks a lot, uh, then uh, one is cut off from the source, and there can be a tendency to go into a lot of fear, uh, a lot of anxiety, a lot of shame, a lot of guilt, uh, and to use various addictions to numb out. And basically, we know from uh, acupuncture and Chinese medicine, whenever um, the meridians, whenever guilt, one is in guilt, certain energy lines are blocked, one is in, um, for example, the heart meridian, when one is feeling angry, the energy to the heart is blocked, and uh, uh, in, when one is in fear, the energy to the kidneys are blocked you know, in China. So basically, these negative emotions create also um, an effect in the physical body. And if they remain blocked for extended periods of time, one is in, in shame, guilt, or fear for extended periods of time, or in strong levels of guilt, shame, and fear for long periods of time, then usually the manifestation, which is starting at the spiritual, the limiting belief, uh, then starts to manifest at the level of the physical. So one, you know, if one was holding fear and had certain limiting beliefs of illnesses, a fear-based illness could manifest, such as kidney failure or a mental illness, uh, a limiting belief uh, with uh, things like depression, uh, which is usually the illusion that something outside of oneself is the source of happiness. So, if, for example, if I think that being young and, and attractive looking is a source of my happiness, and now I feel like an old fogey, then it's like, oh, well, it's not worth living. I'm depressed because I'm, not long, I'm no longer young. Or it could be like um, if I project... Uh, that the source of my happiness is money, and I suddenly lose all my money, then I could get depressed and feel suicidal because I projected out that money is the source of my happiness. So these things lead to depression and, and can lead to... Uh, sorry, we're talking about mental illness, not physical illness. Yeah. So these can... Uh, so this level of unhappiness, i.e. repressed guilt, shame, um, then will attract from the collective belief systems in correlation to how much of a block there is uh, in the repressed feelings and, and the type of limiting beliefs that one is holding. Uh, and uh, or and one, in a way, choose, not choose maybe is not the right word, be imprinted with a belief system uh, that one chooses or maybe chooses not the right, unconsciously chooses, or one picks up from the collective which matches the severity of disconnection so if there's a lot of guilt and a lot of shame, a lot of negative beliefs, you know, very severe life-threatening illness could life threatening well, let's say a, a very severe men mental illness. That, so let's talk about mental illness then, uh, rather than physical illness, because that's what the topic of. So mental illness. So they have a thing like 
if I feel a lot of guilt and I'm feeling very disconnected and I'm blaming everyone in my head and feeling like a victim um, uh, and I'm, I'm making others suffer and unconsciously feeling even more guilt about that, then um, I can attract to myself a mental illness, which I feel I deserve, you know, to meet out the punishment that I'm due uh, for being uh, deserve. I'm so guilty. I, I'm in need of punishment. And, oh, that person who's got cancer or not cancer, let's use mental, that person who's depressed and suicidal or that person who's just anxious all the time and wants to and doesn't see the point in living. That sounds like, I'm not saying that's has happened consciously, but it seems like it's a, it's, um, it's a fitting uh, uh, mental illness for um, my guilt and my limiting beliefs um, and feeling of separation. Well, there's so much guilt and I'm so uh, deserving of punishment, like maybe I'll get a long-term suicidal depression. Uh, that seems to be the right thing to manifest and have all the physical things. Like, let's get all my brain neurotransmitters uh, out of order and uh, and uh, and and manifest this uh, manifest this uh, correlating mental illness uh, schizophrenia um, i suspect um, hmm. you know so i would say certain illnesses are karmic as well uh, i mean karmic is a belief system but is karmic in the sense of like um, i don't know maybe i drove someone mad or i ended up cursing someone uh, you know, non-stop, and then uh, or unstabilize someone, and they became potty. You know, um, so uh, you know, so severe mental illnesses, or maybe I, I um, you know, like with schizophrenia, where it can be just uh, I would I would I'd imagine I'm not an expert in these illnesses, but I'd imagine there can be all kinds of insane, um, insane um, occurrences. And maybe feelings of being uh, vulnerable to psychic attacks and entities and all kinds of things. So for, you know, so, you know, what in this lifetime or past lifetime could one have been involved in? But it seems this is the fitting, you know, like, uh, you know, having the the horror of schizophrenia uh, going on in either a severe or mild case. So, um so again, it would need, you know, that can be investigated through um, kinesiologic research or through past life regression to see what needs to be done to to release something of a severe mental disorder or, or a mild, um, mild, um, mild mental anxiety or depression. Now, let's see, mental illnesses. Oh, yes, you can have the usual, I mean, the, the, the mild ones like, I don't know, um, being dis, oh, yes, I see, I see. Um, dyslexia, attention deficit disorder, um, you know, various things like yeah, in, intense paranoid fear, not being able to speak, whatever it may be. Um, so, um, but I like to look at, you know, well, I can pick up these belief systems. I mean, I could see or be imprinted by belief systems. A belief system can be just be looking at someone and say, that's what I deserve. You can pick, you then pick up the software, if you like, from the collective ego, in how to manifest it, you know, uh, so you can see someone limping, uh, or you can see someone stuttering, or you can see somebody. Um, so for me, there'd be symbolic meaning in how it's manifesting uh, mentally. Um, I would, you know, I often, uh, I do the anti-karma prayers, like, uh, for example, um, if, if, I, if I have trouble speaking, maybe I've in this lifetime or past lifetime given, you know, not allowed people to speak up. And so I then now to sort of, um, I feel an appropriate um, undoing of what I've inflicted on others it might be that I find it difficult to speak. I definitely do some, you know, to authority figures I, who I think have power, I project magical or special qualities. I can, I can sometimes have that. And then if I don't project magical qualities, there's, do I have problems talking to a brick wall? Not really, <laughs> you know, but uh, uh, anyway, uh, so so there's often a symbology and the severity of how much is also related to the, the level of repressed feelings and picking up some uh, mental illness that um, is related to the uh, to the disconnection from source 
And often one can uh, fish out the belief systems and cancel them or try and um, make a guess as to what's the symbology. You know, like if I can't speak, um, you know, for me, it's like I've been silenced. Well, have I silenced others in some way in this lifetime or others um, that I need to sort of uh, release the uh, the guilt and undo that through either prayer or other mechanisms? So, um, yeah, so I think, you know, for my my thing is like the severity of the illness and how traumatic it is. Uh, you know, there there are, you know, shall we say, roots to it, you know, whereas if um, the worst one gets with a mental illness is feeling a little bit negative for half an hour and then one is good all the time, it's not very severe. Uh, whereas if it's taking months and years, uh, one is under a cloud or as one is having severe attacks of something, then... Um, yeah, it can be addressed on all levels. It can be addressed spiritually by looking into it, belief systems karmically, undone through the Course of Miracles, anti-karma prayers. Then you can look at it from um, uh, 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 and, uh, uh, therapy or uh, drug-related, uh, medicine-related view. And um, uh, yeah, uh, so uh, whatever, is, whatever and, and tackle it on all levels. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, depending on what the physical illness is, I mean, I, like I do the anti-karma prayer regularly. So I try and look at the symbology or try and, I mean, some of them are obvious. Like if I had, if I had, um, if I had depression, I would cancel my belief in depression. I'd also suspect that uh, I've inflicted, I've made the lives of other people depressing in this lifetime and others. Um, you know, uh, pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's made the lives of others uh, unbearably depressing. I'm sure I've done that one. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, or if it's uh, something like attention deficit disorder, well, I pray for forgiveness for the one in me who's um, destroyed the attention of others, uh, you know, through my insanity in this lifetime. So each, each, you know why? Why have I believed in that illness, and why? You know what's what's attracted that, and try and undo it, cancel it, or forgive it. And if there's appropriate medicines, uh, just take them. Whenever I take medicines, I just cancel my belief in side effects. So uh, that usually works for me. Um, so, yeah, and the more severe mental illnesses, you know, I, I would suppose things like uh, schizophrenia. Or, having nightmares or feeling like one is being attacked or, or, or rushing off into the into hell every now and then, you know, they are, are what I'd call more severe types. Um, but each, each case would be different. But uh, anyway, I'll stop talking.